Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up a project with a Flask backend and a React frontend. We'll be setting up a Flask backend API and connect the backend to the frontend. All right, so first of all, I have opened VS Code inside of this empty folder called React Flask Video, and this is the folder that will contain all of the code. It will contain the frontend, which is in React, and the backend, which is written in Python. So first to set this up, I'm just going to create a folder called flask server using the terminal. So I'm just going to open up my terminal and then type in mkdir flask hyphen server. Okay. And this is the folder that will contain our Python file, which will be the backend. So next I'm just going to CD into it. So I'll just do CD flask hyphen server and then do touch server.py. So I'm basically going to create an empty file called server.py and this will be our backend file. Now that we have our backend folders and files done, I'm going to create the front end. So to do this, I'll just open up another terminal and then uh, create a React app with npx create React app. So I'll do npx create React app client, and this will be our client. And this will take a while, so I'll just speed up the video. All right, so now our client has been created and now we can move on to installing packages in our backend and configuring a few things. So to configure a few things in our backend and install packages, we're going to first create a virtual environment. So I'll just do python3 hyphen m v e n v and then the path to our environment. So I'll just put v e n v for this field since it'll get created in this flask server directory. And for Windows, I'll, it'll be a little bit different, so I'll put the commands on the screen for it. Then to activate it, you can just do source venv and then slash bin and then slash activate for Mac. If you're on Windows, I'll put the command on the screen. Now that the virtual environment has been created and is activated, we'll just need to install Flask. So to install Flask, You'll just do pip3 install flask if you're on Mac, and if you're on Windows, you're just going to do pip install flask. It'll take a few seconds to install, and once it's finished installing, we're ready to write some code in this server.py file to set up our backend. And once we're done with the backend, we will move on to setting up the frontend. Okay, so to set up our Python backend API, I'm just going to first set up a normal Flask app. And in the app, we're gonna have a route called members, and this route will basically return a JSON array of members. Then once we set this up, we'll connect the front end to the back end and then get that JSON array of members from the back end. And then we'll display that array onto the screen. So first to set up our back end, I'm just going to import Flask by doing from Flask import Flask. Then we're going to need to create the app instance. So I'll just do app is equal to Flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Then we're going to need to create a route for the members. So I'll just do uh, members API route. And I'll do at app.route. Let's do forward slash members and then define the members. And I'm just going to return a JSON array. So I'll just do return members and then an array. So I'll do member one and then member two and member three. Okay. Then we're going to need a way to run our app, so I will just do if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore app dot run debug is equal to true. And I'm putting debug is equal to true since we're in development mode. Now if we run our app using python3 server.py, if you're on Windows you can do python server.py. And once we run the app it will be running on local host port 5000 by default. So if we go to our browser and type in localhost port 5000 and then if we go to forward slash members we're going to see this over here so if i just do forward slash members you can see that we have the json data displayed on the screen and our backend api has been built now we can start working on the front end so to begin setting up the front end i'm just going to first start off by removing some unnecessary files so i will remove app.test.js um, index.css logo.svg and I'll remove this import line for index.css inside of index.js and now we're ready to configure the front end. 
Now to configure the front end, we're going to need to go to our package.json file. And this file is used to list all of the packages installed in our front end, as well as keep track of data associated with our front end. And what we're going to do is configure the proxy in this file to connect the front end to the back end. So what I'll do is just insert this line called proxy. And then this will be equal to our back end. So I'm just going to put HTTP colon slash slash localhost at port 5000 and we're putting port 5000 since our back end is running on port 5000 and this proxy is just here so that we can tell react which port our back end is running on and so that we can make relative requests instead of having to type the full url and now that we've written this proxy we can move on to the next step so what we need to do next is we need to go to our app.js file and remove all the starter code here and then i'll do the rfce shortcut to get some code set up for a functional component and then we're going to import use state and use effect. And I'll explain what these are used for. So use state will be used to create a state variable, which will contain the data retrieved from the backend. And the same state variable will be used to render the data on the page. And then this use effect will be used to fetch the backend API on the first render. If you don't know how these work, I'd recommend checking my videos on them. And those videos are on the top right of the screen on the cards. But if you do know how they work, let's start. First, we're going to start up our front end. And to do that, we need to go to this terminal and type cd client to cd into this client directory that contains our front end code. Then we're going to do npm start to start up our front end. And if we go to our browser, it'll automatically open up a new tab on localhost 3000 right here, as you can see. And on this page, we have nothing here. And the reason we have nothing here is because we don't have anything written in the code. So what we're going to do is first create a state variable, then fetch this backend API and whatever the response the backend gives, which is going to be this JSON data, will set the state variable to this JSON data and use that same state variable to render that data onto this front end page. Now we just need to create the state variable and to do that, we'll just go to our code and type in const. So const data and set data, and this will be equal to use state. So use state and this data is the actual variable and this set data is the function we can use to manipulate the state of this data variable. So the initial state is this right here, but once we fetch the backend, the state of this data variable will change to the data that we kept from the backend. Okay, so now that we have created the state variable, we can start using use effect to fetch the backend API. So I'll write some code down, I'll explain to you guys once I'm done since it'll be easier to understand. All right, so what we're doing is this. We're using use effect to fetch this forward slash members route in this backend over here, right here. And whatever response that the members route gives us, which is going to be this JSON array that you see right here, we're gonna put that uh, response into JSON and whatever data is inside of that JSON, we're going to set that data into this data variable using this set data function. And to make sure that our API fetching worked, we're gonna be console.logging the data to see if we actually retrieved it or not. And I just passed in this empty array at the end of this use effect block just so that this only runs once. Okay, so now that we have written the code to fetch the API, we just need to check if it's working. So in our code, I put this console.log data right here to see if we actually retrieved it from the backend. So if we go to our web page and then refresh the web page and open up our console, you can see that we have retrieved the members from the backend. And this basically means that we've successfully fetched this backend API. And all we need to do next is display these members onto the web page right here. All right, so to display onto the web page, it's also fairly simple to do. So I'm going to first write down the code for it and then I'll explain it afterward. Okay, so I've saved my changes, and if we go to the web page, you can see that we have the members from the backend displayed onto the front end, meaning that our app is working perfectly. It's fetching the members from the backend and displaying them, which is the whole purpose, but you may be wondering how it's displayed. So if I go back to my code, 
Um, what we're basically doing is checking if the members array is equal to undefined or not. And if it is equal to undefined, that means the API is being fetched and we don't have the members yet. So we just display loading. Otherwise, meaning that the API has been fetched, we'll map every member inside the members array to a P tag to display the members one by one like this. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. This video is made mainly to show you how to set up a project with a Flask backend and a React frontend. And to just recap what we did, we basically set up this backend API with Flask with these members here. And in the frontend, we just fetch this backend API and display those members. Now, of course, I'd encourage you guys to do more with this. For example, if you wanted to make a to-do list app, you can send requests with Axios and React to the backend to save to-dos and display them by building a backend API like this. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. And if you enjoyed or learned something new, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. With that being said, have a nice day.